so in the last class we were discussing classes right so let us continue the discussion and uh, let us see the physical meaning of what do you mean by class physical interpretation so by now if you have uh, worked out uh, classes for nh3 molecule and c4b molecule which we were discussing in the previous class so if you have worked out the classes for these two molecules you must have realized that classes are the group elements that are equivalent in nature intuitively i must say at this point they belong to one class right so for example c3 and c3 square they seem equivalent and then they belong to same class three sigma v's of nh3 they belong to one class so what do you mean by equivalent symmetry operations so let us see because if we can identify equivalent symmetry operations we can simply group this equivalent symmetry operations in one class and we don't have to actually calculate all the similarity transformations for individual group element right that will be easier so equivalent symmetry operations are those operations which can be transformed i'll give you two definitions for this into each other by a third operation in the group so what do i mean by saying that let's say if we are considering nh3 molecule the point group is c3v so c3 and c3 square are equivalent symmetry operations that is effect of c3 or effect of c3 square can be interconverted between each other by a third symmetry element so let us uh, without wasting time let us see uh, what do i mean by that let me write down nh Three, one, two, three. So let's operate C three on this, and we will also operate C three square. Okay. So here, C three square. So C three anti-clockwise will give you the three goes to one. So three, one, two, and C three square will give you. Three comes here, right? Three, two, one. Now these two operations must be related by a third symmetry element. So let's say if I want to go from here to here, what symmetry operation I can use so that I can call these equivalent? Can you find out one? So if I do. so i can say that this is c3 in this case actually this is the same but these two are basically the effect of the two are still interrelated by an element in the group similarly here also i can go by so this will be by c3 square right yeah and this will be by c3 right so idea is basically that the two symmetry operations are equivalent if the result of the two things two operations can be interconverted into each other okay it can be by a third element or by one of the basically one of the elements of the group in other words we can also say that let me write down the exact definition operations in a class k 
can be interconverted by changing the access system we will see an example of this through application of some symmetry operation of the group so let us consider c4 viewpoint group so what i'm saying is operation in a class can be interconverted by changing the access system through application of some symmetry operation of the group so the meaning is so let us consider c4 and c4 cube which belong to same class we should have all worked out by now so the effect of uh, let's say let's take the coordinate system okay so x y minus x minus y okay this is the axis system axis system i would call as a okay now if i do a c4 operation on to x y c for z my x is around z right so what happens to x x goes to anti-clockwise so x moves to y and y moves to minus x right this is the effect of this particular operation now similarly let's say what is the effect of c4 cube on x y c4 cube will be 270 degree rotation right so x goes to minus y and y goes to x okay now let us say that if we change the axis system so that by one of the elements which is sigma d1 this is the plane sigma d1 sigma d1 is part of this c4b group so if we change the axis system we go to y x minus y minus x right now in this so let me name it as axis system b now in this new axis system in new access system which is obtained by application of one of the group elements let us apply this c4 operation on xy again so now if i do on to xy what do i get so again i'm doing x anti-clockwise rotation so x moves to minus y and my y goes to x now if i do c4 cube on xy what do i have so x moves here that is y and y moves to minus x right now you see that the effect of c4 was earlier y minus x now effect of c4 is minus y x so the effect of c4 and c4 cube are interconverted by changing the axis system and the axis system is changed by one of the symmetry elements of the group so what i'm saying over here is operations in a class can be interconverted so operations in a class can be interconverted so operations in the class can be interconverted by changing the axis system from a to b through application of some other symmetry element which is sigma d1 here okay so this should be very clear this is the physical significance because basically what we are trying to say is that when i'm fixing certain elements in a class that means their effect is interconverted so it's like changing the access system and doing the same operation again so that means so if c4 is doing certain operation in one access system 
and C4 is doing certain other operation in another access system, then C4 cube should also give me the same result as the previous access system or the one of the access system. So the idea is that uh, if you change the access system, the two symmetry operations change their result and then they are called as equivalent symmetry operations and thus they are classified into same class. Now we have understood the physical significance, we know how to classify and now we will see later that why this is so important, why finding elements which belong to one particular class is so important that we will see in matrix representation but that will come maybe in a one or two lectures later. So this uh, finishes the discussion for subgroup and class. The next important topic is matrix representation of symmetry operations. These are operators, so all operators by definition can be written as a matrix representation if we know the proper basis sets. So let's work it out. Let's see. Uh, let us consider coordinate system x, y, z, and let's say how a point x, y, z undergo transformation due to these symmetry operations. So let's first consider for identity E. Okay. So let's say we are trying to find an, a matrix representation for E. So this is the matrix which we do not know. Okay. This is the matrix. Now initial coordinates of the system are x1, y or of a point are x1, y1, z1. This is the initial location of the point and this is the final location. New location we can say. Now new location in case of identity will not be different, right? It will be same as x1, y1, z1 because identity operation does not change anything in the molecule or to the point. So that means E should be a unit matrix of order 3, 3 cross 3. Right? So that is very easy to see. Now if we do this multiplication, this, this is a 3 cross 3 matrix. And if we multiply x1, y1, z1, which is 3 cross 1, so what we will get is a 3 cross 1 matrix, right? And we all know how to multiply a matrix, right? So x1 multiplies with 1 plus y1 into 0 plus z1 into 0, which will give you first element here, x1. Similarly, x1 into 0 plus y1 into 1 plus z1 into 0 will give you y1. x1 into 0 plus y1 into 0 plus z1 into 1 will give you z1. So that's how you will determine matrix representation for E. So let, let us look at other symmetry operation. Next in the line is, let's start with the easier ones first and then we will move to the complex ones. So for reflection, let's say sigma, okay. So again, let's uh, write down the unknown one as question mark. The initial, let's consider this as uh, sigma x, y maybe, okay. We have to consider one plane, so you can consider any plane. So if we have x1, y1, z1, the initial point will move to because x1 and y1 would be lying on sigma xy so they will not change their locations so they will be same then z1 will move to minus z1 z1 will go to minus z1 right so that means what do i have as matrix for sigma xy 
because x1 and y1 are not changing anything they will be 1 and 1 at the diagonal and since z is going into minus sign you can write z as negative right similarly you can write for sigma yz this will be minus 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and for sigma x z it will be 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 1 right so this is easy to see reflection is easy now also look at inversion so in an inversion operation what happens to x y z i matrix x goes to minus x y goes to minus y z goes to minus z right so this implies i matrix is nothing but negative unitary this should also be very clear there is no confusion in this right so now let us look at where we need to do some calculations for rotation so let's consider C to Z rotation where Z is collinear because it will be easier to see. So C to Z rotation on X1, Y1, Z1 gives rise to. So now X1 will move to X2, Y1 will move to Y2, Z1 will remain at Z1. So what do I mean? I mean. If this is x, y, z, and we have a point in plane which is x1, y1, z1, which can be represented like this, then I'm moving to a certain point in space, which is by application of c to z, which is now defined with the coordinate as x2, y2, z1. Okay, my height does not change. So if I'm fixing my Z1, I can also reduce this to a 2D problem where I can say that X1 by application of C to Z matrix, my X1, Y1 is actually changing to X2, Y2. So this is only for the solving it a little easily so that we are converting into a 2d problem so let's see what it means we have x y x1 y1 moves to x2 y2 let's call this angle as phi and this angle as theta and let's call the length of this point or distance of this point from origin as r which remains unchanged because we are only moving in this direction so this is my rotation right so if we want to write now x2 y2 in terms of x1 y1 how do i write so let's see x1 can be written as r cos phi and y1 can be written as r sin phi right this is the basic trigonometry now let's say if we are trying to write x2 in those terms x2 will be equal to r cos theta plus phi right because that is the total angle theta plus phi so x2 can be written as r cos theta plus phi and y2 can be written as r sin theta plus phi right so now let's try to expand this x2 is nothing but r cos theta cos phi minus you can say r sin theta 
sin phi, right? That's my expansion for cos theta plus phi. Okay, so now I know that r cos phi is x1 and r sin phi is y1. So I can write x2 as x1 cos theta minus y1 sin theta. So similarly, if you expand y2 sin theta plus phi, what you will get is x1 sin theta plus phi1 cos theta. So now if I write this in matrix form, what do I get? So in matrix form, the above equation can be written as cos theta minus sin theta and we have sin theta cos theta into x1 y1 which gives me x2 y2 okay so now again introducing the z-axis in the system which is not changing so we can say this implies that cos theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 1 right i am only extending the whole thing into third dimension which is z which does not change so notice that i am writing z1 as z1 right y1 goes to y2 x1 goes to x2 whereas z1 remains as z1 okay so that means this implies that this particular matrix is my representation for c to z now i can take any angle or c and z right this is not uh, we have not explicitly said any angle here so this is for c and z let me also correct it in the previous one here so let's say this is c and z all right so now if i want for c to z what i will have to do is my theta will be 180 degree right so accordingly the values of cos theta and sin theta will be placed here and that will be the matrix for c to z similarly if i want c3 z my angle will be now 2 pi by 3 right and then if it's c4z it will be 2 pi by 4 and so on and so forth so you can easily calculate rotation matrix or matrix representation for any kind of rotation okay now next is uh, for improper rotation which is s and z so we all know that improper rotation s and z can be written in terms of c and z into sigma x y right so sigma x y because that sigma is perpendicular to c and z so that has to be very clear if we are taking our rotation axis along z axis then the sigma has to be the perpendicular plane now if we can obtain this matrix easily because we know that the matrix representation for this as well as this so let's just multiply the two matrices so we have cos theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cos theta 0 and we have x and y unchanged and z goes to minus z right so the only difference we will have is that we will have rest everything same and instead of plus one over here we will have the only difference is instead of plus one over here we will have minus one which defines that now z z1 actually goes to minus z1 okay 
for improper rotation okay and the x1 y1 will still go to x2 y2 whereas z1 will go to minus z1 that is the meaning of improper rotation okay so that should be very very clear so if that is clear we will move to how to write matrix representation in next class we will see how to write matrix representation for various point groups okay so that's all for today so thank you